What is going on? Welcome back to Shed Built. In this episode, we're cutting a big hole in the bonnet and fitting a top mount in the cooler. Alright, so before we get into mounting the intercooler, I'll just give you a quick look at it. This is the Aeroflow 450 by 300 with a 76 millimeter core, three inch outlets, black. This is basically the biggest unit I can fit underneath the bonnet. Um, I've actually already started making a mount for it, which will give you a quick look at here. I did it off camera because by the time I did the third one, which I filmed all of it, I just got sick of it and just got stuck into it. Uh, you can see here it's pretty simple design, it's just a bit of flat bar all welded together and a couple of airflow holes mounted a thermo fan onto it it's all mounted on rubber mounts so there's no steel on aluminum which will prolong the life of the cooler so it's all on rubber mounts here for the flat bar down here where the actual base will go i've got some of this rubber tape here rubber foam tape with an adhesive back so that'll stick onto here and there'll be no steel on alley at all uh, you can see there i've got the studs for the cooler. This is the old cooler off the 2H. I'll get the cooler mounted onto the mount and hopefully it'll make a bit more sense. So now hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. Got our rubber mounts up the front here. Uh, underneath will obviously be the foam. Notched out the front here a bit. Uh, on the back, you can see we'll still have plenty of airflow coming through it. Um, now what we need to do is make up a couple of legs from here that tie into the engine. Yes, I want to mount it to the engine, I don't want to mount it to the body because when the engine's moving, I don't want there to be any stress, fractures, cracks through this main plate here on any of the welds. So I'm gonna mount it to the engine, all rubber mounted, and it will be nice and solid. So obviously the intercooler and the thermo and everything is not gonna fit under the bonnet. So I think the best way to go about this is to cut a big hole and then we can start mocking up the intercooler inside the engine bay. And obviously I don't want a big hole in the bonnet. So to fix that, I've got this. So this is a 79 series DPF model dual bonnet hump. I got this from the fiberglass factory and this is just a generic one fits all sort of bonnet scoop. So you can see there, it's not molded to fit the 75 series or anything, so it's gonna take a lot of work. You can see now how far we're off. And to fix that, I'm gonna bring these right down the front and mold it all into the bonnet. So to do that, we're gonna to have to use fiberglass. And to get the fiberglass to bond to the steel, I'm gonna to have to strip all of this paint back. So I've got the paint stripper here. I'm about to start cutting into this, so to give it something to bond into with a razor blade. And then slather this thing down and see what happens. Hopefully it'll all come off.
All right, so as you saw, I just cut a massive hole in the bonnet. I have to go change my jocks, but it's all right, we got through it. I had to put some screws in it to hold it all in place once I'd measured it a thousand times using different reference points along the bonnet. It takes ages, as you can see, I had to make a couple of relief marks. It seems a bit barbarian just screwing straight into the bonnet, but that's how everyone's told me to do it. Once I get some uh, panel bond around the whole flange, then the screws come out and then I'm gonna glass over the top of it, fiberglass it in and then body filler and then I can start shaving it and molding it into the bonnet. You can see up here where I've marked out this square here, it's because of the factory dip in the bonnet there from the 75. So what I'm gonna do, instead of trying to bog it or fiberglass it in, I'm just gonna cut it all out and add a flat plate into there. And then we can start reinforcing underneath there the structural bits of the bonnet where I've had to cut out all along that seam there. I'll plate those in, try out a bit more structure in it, even though I don't think it's going to do anything, but it'll look a whole lot better. But you can see we've got a pretty nice tight fit along all the seams now, so it should mould pretty nicely. But yeah, I want to work on getting this cut out. Alright, so I've got that front plate welded in there now. Skip me making it, cutting it out, welding it in, because you've seen me do it a thousand times before. So now I've just marked a line around the perimeter there, and I'm going to go around and scuff the whole bonnet with 40 grit on an oil wheel sander, just to scuff it up to give something for the uh, panel bond and the fiberglass to really bite into. All right, so I've just put some edge primer on this inner seal through here because obviously once the scoop goes on, we won't be able to get to it. I've uh, left the bare metal here for the panel bonds to be able to bite into that. I've also just ground this back down to bare fiberglass all around the edge here. And I've got some ratchet straps set up as well as the screws. So once it all gets glued down, I'll be able to strap it all down and clamp it with the ratchet straps and the screws. So now using some of this 3M 0474 uh, panel bond. I'm just going to go around on both the flanges, apply a bit of this, flip it over, screw it down, and clamp it down. So it's the next day. I've let this cure and harden overnight, and it's gone absolutely rock solid. You can see here we've got a nice tight fit all the way along on all the seams and I think that really is the key for this fiberglass stuff is you really want the best fit you can. You're going to take your time, slowly shave down all the edges and just get it fitting as best you can before you go and glue and screw it down because you don't want this under a lot of tension so it doesn't crack down the future. But now I'm going to go around and take out all these screws and then I'm going to cut up some chopped fiberglass strand in strips and just lay it down along all the edges here and scuff up all the metal underneath it and then we can start resing it in and then do some fiberglass reinforced filler over the top of that. All right, so now that we've got the scoop securely mounted to the bonnet, it's time to get back to mounting this cooler. So I've had an idea to use a couple of ratchet straps just to hold it up and I've got a little chop down there to level it out. So what I'm gonna do now is using a couple of these studs through here, I'm just gonna measure up the distance. Uh, basically what we were doing before, measure the distance, get them welded onto this base plate here and then we can finish off the scoop.
So I've just coated the intercooler in the KBS rust seal. And while we've got that drying, I'm gonna start taking a look at the airbox. This is the stainless steel custom four inch airbox from Patrol Doctor. And what I've got here is just some ratchet straps again and some hockey strap just holding it in place. And this is roughly where I've got it. You can see there the snorkel is gonna come in through the opening into the inlet, back out through here. And then we'll have a crossover pipe going to the turbo. So I've got a bit of 316 stainless steel sheet here. And you can see I've just scribed a couple of lines into the side there to make up some tabs that we can mount the airbox onto the driver's side fender. So I'll go ahead and drill some holes, cut this out, and then we'll get them welded onto the airbox. All right, so now that we've got the intercooler and the airbox all sorted, mounted, and finalized, we're taking a look at this bonnet again. I've just gone around and sanded and feathered in all of these edges as much as I can. And this panel bond actually sands really nicely, but I wouldn't go for this 3M panel bond. I'd go for the Sikaflex two-part epoxy panel bond, which I also used underneath. I uh, panel bonded all the structure down to the main frame and also did another bead all around the inside. So now I'm gonna take a look at fiberglassing. And what I've got is this one litre fiberglass repair kit. Uh, I've got a roller and some cloth as well. I'm gonna start off using the um, woven stuff first. I'm gonna cut about 60 millimetre strips to put it all the way around. And then I'm gonna come back over with the cloth and put them in all different directions because the cloth, you only get strength in one way. Whereas with the woven, you get strength all around. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting out some strips and getting it laid onto the bonnet. All right, so that has been a massive couple of days just sanding, rebogging, sanding, rebogging. You see there, I've got a couple of skims on it around the corners, didn't need too much because it was nice. And we got that feathered in pretty easy, but on the front here, it needed a fair bit of work, but we've still got as minimal bog as possible. So now I'm gonna go around with a bit of U-Pole Acid Etch and paint all the bare steel and a bit of the body filler. And then we can look at getting some high build primer on there and then we'll start scuffing that down and then we can finally paint it and get it back on there.
Alright, so we've now got the bonnet in some good quality two-pack high solids high build primer and I've let it cure for a couple of days. Now it's time to start blocking it by hand. Um, I just want to show you a quick example of why it's so important to use a guide coat. You see here I've got a powdered guide coat but you don't have to use this stuff. You can just use a bit of rattle can black and just give a quick mist over the entire panel. By using this stuff here put some onto the panel just like this and already you can see all the sanding marks all through there so grabbing our block and you want to use a block I've got a bit of 180 here and I'll give this a quick block back and you can see there how it's quite rough and textured but if I keep going right in the middle here, it's all one flat solid color through there. So you know that it's completely flat through this part and through here where it's still got a lot of texture. That's where you keep needing sanding through. So if you don't use a guide coat and you just assume that it's all flat and smooth, then most likely you'll probably get a wavy panel by the end result once it's all said and done and painted. So you keep going through, sanding it until it's all flat, one color, and there's no black textured paint left from your guide coat. So I'm gonna go through now. I'm not gonna do it dry, I'm gonna do it wet with 180, scuff the whole panel down, block it, and then we can start putting some Raptor on there. Alright, so these stickers that you just saw me put on, I actually never planned on doing it. One of you guys reached out on Instagram and asked if that was going to be the way and I'm pretty glad I did because I think it breaks up the bonnet a hell of a lot more and it kind of ties into the sandy and black look that seems to be following this thing around. But that was actually two weeks ago that I installed these. I've been out to work and before I flew out I dropped this off to Hayden at Niche Welding and I'm so excited to show you what's under here. So let's have a look. this 
I'm so in love. This is absolutely insane. Now, obviously we got niche welding here to do the exhaust, and after that there was no one else I was gonna trust to do the intercooler piping. And like I said, I dropped this off to him before I went to work. So because of that, unfortunately I didn't get any footage of him actually making it, but he took lots of photos and videos, which I'll put in after this, but I'll just give you a quick explanation of what he had to work with here. So this cooler pipe here is pretty simple. It's just one little dog leg straight down to the turbo up into the intercooler. But with this side over here, it's definitely a different story. You can see the tolerances he had to work with there. So he actually had to shrink all of that piping there with multiple cuts just to get it to fit. And it turned out awesome. I actually didn't know how he was gonna do it, but he got it done and it's all in this seamless finish that he's known for. Uh, we've got that mated to the Patrol Doctor airbox. Comes around all the way over, hugs the intercooler really tightly because obviously with our bonnet scoop, uh, it had to fit within that little gap there. And with the cooler in there, it doesn't leave much room. But he got it done again. So it comes over, crosses over, and then down into the feed for the turbo. This is all in stainless steel, back burged, TIG welded, seamless finished polished it all by hand and it is insane i'll roll on a couple of those photos and videos now and i'll speak to you soon So as you saw, he's definitely a master of his craft. He went absolutely above and beyond for me. He bent over backwards trying to get this done because now that I've got an intercooler and all the pipe work and everything's pretty safe in here, I'm gonna go on a trip. So he just made sure that he could do everything he could to get me going and I really do appreciate it. And like I said before, I'm not affiliated with niche welding by any means, but I definitely do rate what he does. And you know me, I like to build as much as I can and do as much as I can, but with stuff like this, and when I know the work that he can do and the result he's gonna get, I just couldn't mirror this. So it's better just get the professionals in. Um, I'll link his Instagram, you can contact him on there, he's mobile, and I mean, the work speaks for itself. But because we're going on a trip, there's one more thing I'd like to do before I go. All right, now this is something that I've been super excited for. Like I said, I've got a little trip coming up for Chrissy and this will make life so much easier. This is from the absolute legends at Outback Gear Solutions and this is part of their brand new canvas bag range, specifically designed for troopies in mind. I uh, love little businesses like this. They're a young Aussie couple from New South Wales, just pumping out quality products from their lounge room. Uh, this one in particular is their rear barn door and it's made out of six ounce Aussie made canvas. They have a full in-depth video on how to install one of these, which I'll chuck a link in for if you decide you want one, it's super helpful. I'll also leave a link to their website and Instagram if you wanna know more. But now I'm gonna go watch their video and get it installed.
right, and that is it for another episode. Again, I just wanna give a massive, massive thank you to all the people and the businesses involved. I'm blown away with how well it turned out and how good everything looks and how it performs. It's just exceeded expectations. Uh, if anyone's wondering why the paint from the bonnet and the body is different, it's clearly different, um, it's because the rest of the body is still getting painted, it's still got to be done in the same texture that we've just done the bonnet in, so that will be in future, future episodes. Still a while away, but if anyone's wondering, that's why that is. Uh, big Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone. If anyone's heading away, stay safe on the roads. If anyone's heading southwest of WA and you see me, come say hello. And don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, you know the deal, and I will see you next time. Cheers for watching.